Good morning and blessings and greetings in the name of Jesus Christ to everyone, to the Ministry of Peace Church family. I love you and can continue to keep you in my prayers, just hoping and believing the best for us. I'm Pastor Mitchell Eckstein and I'm glad to be able to come to you this morning in this manner and to share with you. I pray that I may be of encouragement to you this morning, that I may help you in a, in a blessed way to, 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 to improve your life. Amen. I'm going to be sharing with you this morning from a meeting and from messages that were done back in early January of 2020, matter of fact, the first Sunday of, 20, of January 2020. Uh, the message is based on the word that we received from God for, for this year. And each year we receive a word which becomes the theme of our, of our messages, of our teachings, of our prayers for that particular year. I received this word back in the latter part of 2019 and the word is this that 2020 is the year of true worshipers God is calling the church is calling people to true worship back to his heart true worship is not going through exercises or motions or rituals to be a true worshiper it's a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle that is based on or caught up in or flows out from a personal in depth relationship with God through Jesus Christ. An intimate relationship. A close, knitted love relationship. A relationship that is in type, like between a father and a child, personal. This is God's heart. This is the reason we were created. This is the reason why salvation is available. This is the reason we exist and we breathe and have our movements, is that we may be true worshipers. A personal intimate relationship between a father and a child. Amen. The Lord Father impresses upon my heart to to say to you today that in these particular times and of course all the times that we are going to be going into that is those who are true worshipers, those who are in a close-knitted personal relationship with him through Jesus Christ are going to be the ones that are strong and have victory that are going to be living a having inner peace and not being taken over by fear and worry and uncertainty that they're going to be the ones who who who's going to have life and the power of life because he is life he imparts life because he is light and peace and he imparts light and peace because he is freedom and prosperity and this is what he does and what he imparts he can do nothing else and give nothing else but what he is his very nature his very essence even in the similar way we find that a tree, a, say a mango, a mango seed, a sweet mango seed will produce a mango, a sweet mango. It will not produce an orange or some other fruit. It can only reproduce and give birth to that which it is. So I encourage you today, if you're a Christian, take inventory, reflect on yourself. 
commit to having a closer a more surrendered intimate relationship with our Heavenly Father, God Almighty, through Jesus Christ and in Jesus Christ. If you're not a Christian today, I encourage you to, to pause and to, to reflect and to investigate and to take time to consider, to consider these things, to consider Jesus Christ. I encourage you to, to not have a biased, predisposed position against God and against Jesus Christ, against the Scriptures. But open up your heart, open up your ears and your eyes and see that the things that we are experiencing are the things that scriptures have prophesied and revealed that the day and the times are progressively advancing and rumors of war and pestilence and troubles are coming upon us. Do not be yourself worst enemy. Love yourself. Be yourself friend. Give yourself an honest and good opportunity to have life, life eternal, life not just on this earth, but life to come, eternal life to come with our Lord Jesus Christ. I pray and hope that we will all give air to this, that we will come off of the thrones of our own life and seek God first. With that, come with me now and let's go into the message. In the name of Jesus, Amen. Welcome again, everyone, in the name of Jesus, to this wonderful day that we have here today. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, as we have partook this morning of the communion, remembering, recognizing, confessing Jesus and what he did at Calvary, not in a ritual sense and not in a ritual form, but from our hearts, knowing that it is because of him and what he did, amen, that we are here. Matter of fact, if God had not already seen it, and in eternity past that Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God who was crucified, amen, if this was not an eternal work of God, and this solution was not in God's vision and mind and eyes already, there would not even be a creation. We would not even exist. Amen. Because without Jesus Christ, God would have to judge and destroy the creation. Amen. The only reason it continues to exist is because he is the Lamb of God who was crucified from before the foundations of the world. Amen. And that being so, amen, that God was legally able and free to create. And not only legally able to create, hallelujah, but not execute the judgment that we all deserved before we accepted Jesus. Amen. It's on this basis that we exist. We have our movement. We breathe. It's on this basis that we can know that we are here, here with a purpose and not just tissue and blood and bones and ligaments that go to the ground and is no more. It's on this basis that we can 
have this forward look and sight and vision of eternity and know that we know for a certainty, hallelujah, that we are secure, that we have this so great a salvation. Amen. So as in 2020 now, amen, let us surrender and uh, love God. We can trust Him. Brothers and sisters, let me come over here a little bit. We can trust Him. He's able. He's good. And He's willing. We can trust Him, church. We need to stop trusting ourselves. We need to stop trusting other people. And for the love of God, stop trusting this world system. We need to trust Him. Amen. So the word we have received as we close out 2019 and approach 2020, which we are now in, is that this is a year, hallelujah, of true worship and true worship. Amen. Not something we go through the motions and just go through the performance and we do on a Sunday morning. Although, on a Sunday morning we do do that. But true worship is life. It's a lifestyle. Matter of fact, life is worship. What I mean by that is, you worshiping something. You worshiping someone. So if we are not worshiping the true God, we are worshiping some false God. Why is this? Because life, hallelujah, we give and we are under the dominion of someone. We were not made to be independently and have rulership and, and dominion in of ourselves. Amen. Get this, get this truth in our hearts this morning. We were given free will. And we were given knowledge. And we were given revelation so that we could make a choice and choose who we're going to serve. Amen. But when we reject serving God and giving it all to Him, automatically it's a default to serving someone else. Make no mistake about this. It's nothing, there's no gray area that, you know, if I'm not serving God, then, you know, I'm just in that kind of gray area and everything is cool and everything is okay. I'm not serving Satan. Brothers and sisters, we find that in life, it's like a coin. It's two sides. Head or tail. You find in life that there is only life or death. You find in life, my beloved, that there is light and darkness. You find in life that, 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 that it's the yesterday you experience and the today. Two sides. We serve God or we serving some other God that's not God at all. So when the Lord calls us and has declared and decreed that this is the year of true worshipers, we should be exceedingly glad and rejoicing. Because if the Lord has declared it, this is what we can be assured of, that He is backing it up. That He is there to bring it forth. He is there to give you what you need in order to be a true worshiper. You can rest assured of that thing. Amen? But he never forces it down our throats. It's a low choice. It's a low choice this morning. Amen? So faith comes by hearing. And hearing from the word of God. Colossians 1 12. 
giving thanks unto the Father, which has made us meet to be partakers, ready to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. 13. Who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. 14. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. 15. Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. 16. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in the earth visible and invisible whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers all things were created by him and for him 17 and he is before all things and by him all things consist 18 Hallelujah. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. And I want to try to finish at 19. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. This is a hard passage to stop reading. My God, my God, you are so awesome. Let's go back up to 12, brother. Amen. We are here this morning on this first Sunday of the first month, January of 2020. And we took time out to remember, amen, and to recognize and to make a statement, confession, amen, of our belief in Jesus Christ. And that everything that is in our salvation and every hope that we would hope for is because of who he is and what he has done. Amen. Hallelujah. We, 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 we confess that. And as Christians, we say we believe that. We, we declare the glory of God and we declare that he is God and we declare he's Lord and he's King of Kings and he's soon coming again. Amen. And, and having taken that position, what is it left for us to do now, apart from to say these things, but to let these things be real in our life? The corresponding action, uh, not just words, but a corresponding action. Just not words that are empty and without substance, but words that are meaningful and real and translate into real time on the ground. Worship. We were created for his worship. We were created to manifest and show forth his glory. Giving thanks unto the Father which has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints. We are partakers of the inheritance. We are joint heirs with Christ in God this morning. Amen. We have an eternal inheritance, one that won't tarnish, rot, or fade away. And, and this, this has been made good and ready for us because of Jesus Christ. This has to be more than a religious experience. This has to be more than just religious thoughts and words. This has become true and real, a present, a present reality in our inner man. We have to stop just shouting and saying words that I know, that I know, that I know, and that, that, that know, that I know, that I know, be a real know, that I know, that I know. It has to be a real living experience. If God is God, if God is real, then it must be a real living experience. There cannot be a contradiction. 13, 13 brother, who has delivered us, 
from the power of darkness. Wow. He has delivered us from the power of darkness. He has done this delivery through the man, the person, Christ Jesus, and his payment, his sacrifice, his substitution at Calvary. He has brought this awesome event that took place some 2,000 years ago into our present reality, into our knowledge through the gospel of Jesus Christ. We know it because the word has preached it and proclaimed it. Amen. And what it has done, it has delivered us from the power of darkness. You see, when we, when we read these scriptures, and we hear these sayings and these words, expressing these thoughts, sometimes we just need to stop right there and meditate and let God give you revelation knowledge of to the depth of that, what the meaning and what he has delivered us from, from the power of darkness. And when, 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 when we think of that, and that we were under a power, and since we were under the power, we had no ability to deliver ourselves. We had no strength to overcome this power because it was greater than us. We were under it. It was our rulership, and it was darkness. When we read this now, as we put it in the context, we have to draw a dividing line that on the contrast or on the opposite of darkness, there is light. And when we see it from the standpoint of light and darkness, from the standpoint of life and death, from the standpoint of judgment and, and abuse, and eternal life, you understand that this power of darkness is destructive. It is a place of hopelessness. It's a place of abuse. It's a place of fear. It's a place where demonic powers are operating and have power over us. We were as prisoners within this darkness, realm of darkness. With no light, we were blind. We could not see. We had no ability to get out. We didn't know which way to turn. It was a state of absolute, absolute fear and hopelessness. Who has delivered us from the power of this awful thing and has translated, translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. In other words, he just didn't bring you out as you were so that you exist and uh, have your, 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 your being in the manner in which you were before. There was a translation. There was a change that took place. When we put our hope and our trust in Jesus Christ, amen, the word of God tells us that we were born again. In other words, that which you were, you are no longer. You have become a new creature, a new creation in Christ Jesus. Amen. All things have passed away, and behold, all things have been made brand new. Amen. You have been translated from that, that, that place, that kingdom, that, 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 that state that the Jews in type found themselves in Egypt. They knew there was a God, but they did not know him. There had been too many centuries that had passed by, and they had lost the word. And they were under the captivity, and the slavery, and the bondage of that murderer Pharaoh, who was abusing and killing them. And they had no strength of their own. The power of darkness. That's as sinners, 
as people without God. That's that's our state. That's our location. That's 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 our that's the future and the destiny. That's the only thing that we will ever experience without God working through Jesus Christ 14. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Redemption, he purchased us back. We have been bought with a price. We are not our own. In a sense and in a way, if I buy something and I purchase it, let me take this. Bought with a price. I purchased this for money. This belongs to me. This thing here. The only purpose this has is to serve me. The purpose of this iPad is to worship me. Every time I push or touch it, it is supposed to respond, be obedient to my touch. It was purchased with a price. I own it. Take your hands off of it. Not yours. It's mine. It's mine. I own it. It does not have the privilege to say yes or no. It is obedient. A type of what we should be like. The significant difference between the iPad or whatever kind of pad you may have, where it responds obediently to your instructions, to your touch, is because it's just a technical machine. It doesn't have a mind, and it doesn't have free will. Amen? So it's unlike us in that way. So we, we, we are persons, and we, we have a mind, and we have a free will. Because God's goal, his objective, which he will bring to pass, in which that was declared from the beginning, and it is to have sons and daughters, he is to have people come, let us make man in our image and likeness. Amen. And, and, and it is, it is it's in that, that the decree and that operation of being in his image and likeness that, that we have this blessing of being the only creatures in all creation that have a mind that can understand intelligence and free will. Amen? But the fundamental purpose of our intelligence and our free will and our mind is not that we may have an abundance of knowledge. That's okay. It is, it's, it's, it's not that we may be able to speak and to do this and to do that, but the fundamental purpose of your mind and your free will and your intellect is that you may freely subject and surrender yourself as a worship. That it becomes a free will expression. That Lord, you push my button, I say yes. Yeah, although I have the privilege legally to say no. But I make up my mind that I am purchased with a price. I am no longer my own. I am only here and exist because of him. I will only have a, a future, a eternity with him because of him. So Lord, I know you bought me with a price. I know you created me to be with you. Lord, I know you gave me free will. Lord, I know you made a promise to me of an eternal life with you, Lord. And I freely, Lord, I freely give my life to you. Because I know, Lord, you are good and you are faithful. And there's no darkness and no shadow in you. Brother, we can trust him. You are not an iPad. You are a person, a human being, with intelligence, with free will to understand these things. And you cannot use your free will 
You say, Lord, I am yours. I am like the iPad. You purchase me. You touch me. And I respond. You turn me on. And I'm on. And when we have redemption through the blood, even the forgiveness of sins, that thing, that horrible thing, that was separating us from God and condemned us to that place of darkness. Jesus Christ, through the cross, through his blood, through his crucifixion, through his death and his resurrection, has redeemed us. 2020, you have been redeemed from 2019. You have been redeemed from all your sins and all your mistakes of last year. You have been redeemed from those things that are behind you. You have been brought out and into this place, this spiritual time and realm called 2020. You made that crossover. He who is the, the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature, 16. For by him were all things created that in, are in heaven, that are in earth, visible, invisible, whether it be thrones or dominions, principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. Including Satan, including Lucifer, was created by him and for him. And he made his bed in hell. He chose to rebel and to take his life in his own hands and worship himself. And said, I will exalt myself up to the high above the clouds of the highest heavens and be like God. It is the same choice that we face today. It's not all of these other things. They, they, they have their place and they play their part, but it's really about am I going to trust God through Jesus Christ to make me in His image and likeness that my life may be an expression of true worship, bringing glory to God and blessing a multitude of people. Or are you going to say, I will make myself like God. I will live life my way. I believe in Jesus, but I am going to live life by my own means, by my own intelligence, by the power of my own arm. Or am I going to trust Him with the entirety of my life? Because the objective of life for man is to be in God's image and in God's likeness. And only God only God can make us like himself. We were created by him and for him. We belong to him. You can make that choice today. You can, you, 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 you can settle this in a 2020 kind of way. A fresh, brand new way. You can say in your heart, Almighty God, yes, I'm here in 2020 because of you. I'm here to worship. I give myself to you. If I live, I live. If I die, I die. But I will worship. Commitment. So long. 17, I'll try to get you out of here. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. 18. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the head. He is the overlord. He is the King, the Lord over the church. 
He is the governor. He is the boss. Who is the beginning? The firstborn from the dead. That in all days he might have preeminence. Worship. Worship. True worship. In 2020. What happened is magical. What happened even automatically? And you don't go from a zero to a hundred. It's a process. But the process begins in a soul and heart. The process begins right where you are. Giving your life to God right where you are. And if you're all Christians and not talking about our salvation, I'm talking about worship and service, sanctification. It begins right where you are. Stand up. moment in time, Father God, by the Spirit, we say yes. 